should get Foley up here. That'd be amazing. Hi and welcome from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. Welcome into our inaugural Baylor Coaches Show for 2019-2020. Glad you're with yeah, us this Mo. evening. Thank you, Coach. You can hear a great crowd here. And, folks, uh, let me introduce to you our first guest tonight, Baylor head football coach Matt Rule. Coach, welcome to you. Oh, thank you so much. Good Appreciate you, you being here. Look at all these folks who come to see and hear from you tonight. Very grateful. Isn't it great? Oh, I just had a great turkey sandwich, too. So, How, How'd you eat it so fast? Uh, <laughs> Part of being a coach. <laughs> fit it in when you can fit it in. <laughs> Turkey sandwich is good here. Don't, don't you feel from this crowd and just from Waco and, and Central Texas and Baylor fans in general, there's a lot of excitement for this season. Yeah, you know, this time of year is such a good time of year. You know, high school football is getting started. College football, the greatest game in the world, is getting started. And I think um, the last time we took the field was the bowl game. It was a fun day. And I think people are excited to see our guys get out there and play again. And, and I know I am. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's kind of start and, and go chronologically. You've been through spring practice. You've been through the summer. Great work all summer. Fall camp, you've said, has been really, really good. Uh, accomplished pretty much everything you wanted to. Where do you feel like you are right now, two days away from your, your kickoff? You know, I, I told our team today, I said, you know, you have worked really hard. And uh, people might be able to say that they worked as hard as us, but no one can say they worked harder. I mean, these guys have grinded. They've worked. They've sacrificed. And the maturity has been the biggest thing to me. And so now's the time, though, where you go into the next phase. You have to go out there and you have to perform. And um, I want them to be confident. I want them to go out there and play with energy and swagger and love for each other and enjoy the moment. And, uh, you know, there will be mistakes, but I want them to play without fear. And uh, I, think, I think they're ready to do that. Some people may think that's a given, that they're going to work hard. But, uh, you know, it's not always that way. And, you you know, you've been coaching for a while. You can really see how much they put in. Well, I mean, if, if people, if you think about the people you work with, the people you know, the people you work out with, you know, there's uh, everywhere in our society, some people work a little bit harder than others. Some people work less. And we all want to work hard, but it's, it's hard to do. And this team, because of the leadership that we have, because of the veterans, they hold a pretty high standard. What used to seem like a crazy thing that Coach Rule wanted now is the norm. Yeah. And now guys like Graylin Arnold, guys like Charlie Brewer, um, guys like Sam Tecklenburg, their standard is so far above what, what I would have normally thought to be the standard that uh, makes me raise my level. I mean, I think, I think the entire building is functioning at a high level. So that's fun. That's exciting to be around. Uh, have you seen uh, maybe other programs, maybe even yourself, uh, you know, at your previous stop, the third year is kind of the year when you've got your people in place, you've got your, you know, your schemes in place, your coaching staff is very solid. Sometimes the third year is when you can really take a major step forward. Yeah, you know, I was proud of what we did last year. Uh, I thought, you know, it was, it was the biggest jump in college football last year. But the third year is when there's no more excuses. Mm -hmm. There's no more, hey, I, you know, I didn't understand that. Everyone knows what to expect. I know what to expect from Baylor, from, you know, uh, for everything from, like, campus schedules to yeah. game day to, to, you know, the expe expectations. Our players know what to expect. And so now it's time to sit down and go play and, and really figure it out. And so I, I think we have a team that's not making excuses, that's not lowering the standard, that no matter what happens, uh, they're holding each other accountable. And, and that's fun to be around because I get to be a coach. I don't have to be the disciplinarian. I don't have to be the bad guy. I get to just go coach football and help young people be the best that they can be. That culture is really, really impressive to see. I mean, you've got upper-level guys, veterans, seniors, that are really taking hold of the, uh, of the leadership of this team. Oh, absolutely. You know, you take guys like Denzel Mims, you know, goes from being a guy that, you know, struggled kind of, you know, hey, coach, what do you want, what do you expect, and now he's a single digit. Mm -hmm. Guys like Jordan Williams, who, who now are, is a captain. Um, it, it just goes to show you, you know, so often in our society you hear, Everyone talks about young people, and they find all the things. You know, there's a bunch of young people doing things right. And uh, at our place, they're rising to the expectations. In fact, they're setting the expectation. And I see our young players coming in. They don't know any different. And they, they don't know any different because of the uh, sacrifice and the work of, of Jake Frumorg and Sam Tecklenburg and all the guys I mentioned. Um, there's a high standard at Baylor right now, which is really cool to see. Wow. Yeah, it's really fun to watch. It is. You've got 15, uh, 15 returning starters, 12 of those are seniors. And uh, talk about returning players. You had 663 yards in the bowl game, the victory over Vanderbilt. 
100% of that offense, of those players who, who had those yards, are back this year. That's nice. Yeah, and, and <laughs> the, the key for us is trying to figure out how to get the ball to everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, there's only one ball. But, you know, we have an unselfish team as well. We have a bunch of guys that block for each other, that work for each other. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see those guys go make plays. I think the biggest thing I've wanted to see was the, our offensive line and can we be a physical team as well as a dynamic team. And so far, I'd say so good. Good. And uh, defensively, 83% uh, of your tackles from last year, those guys are back. That's, uh, that's a real plus. Absolutely. Those guys have played a lot of football. Now it's time for them to take the next step to eliminate big plays and to go create uh, turnovers. And so I think, that, uh, I think that they understand exactly what's expected, and I, I, I would be, you know, I would be uh, shocked if they didn't go out and do it at a high level. Speaking of turnovers, that's uh, something you guys are really, really uh, have been harping on during the spring through fall camp, creating more turnovers and then not turning it over with the offense. How do you think that's going? I think it's going great. And, and uh, you know, Joey McGuire, if anybody knows Joey, he's one of the most infectious personalities. In fact, Mike Saravo, our linebacker coach, his son Will had an uh, interception in a flag football game. And the minute he showed up at the facility, he gave him a candy bar. You know, like they, you know it's just like we're trying to reward guys who get the ball out. And, um, you know, what we did last year, we won seven games, and we were minus nine in turnover margin. Not many, not many teams can do that. Right. And so, you know, we're not, you know, we're not <laughs> doing that as a badge of courage. We're saying, hey, guys, let's get this turned around. If we can get this stat going in our favor where we're positive in the turnover margin, where we get more turnovers than we give away, uh, we can really, really win a lot of games. And so... Um, people don't want to turn the ball over. It'll be hard to take it away from people, but I think our guys are, are locked in on that mentality. Yeah. Does, uh, does Coach McGuire kind of have carte blanche there as far as uh, how he instills that? Is there any kind of reward system for the players? Yeah, as long as it's within the rules, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of <laughs> right. CA rules. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, uh, they're 18, 19, 20, 21. They're, they're grown men now. But, you know, everyone loves to see your name on a board. Right. Everyone loves to see their picture on the hallway. Everyone loves to get a candy bar and those things, so we try to reward it in, in the small but fun ways. Yeah, nothing like the, the turnover chain or <laughs> anything uh, like that. You know, I've thought about things like that. That's just not really it's my been style. Done. Yeah, yeah, well, and that's been done. Yeah. Somebody suggested to me you should do uh, like a bear head. So if somebody gets a, a, a turnover, a takeaway, uh, they come to the sidelines, they get a bear head to put on. Wow. All right. <laughs> Taylor, get a bear head for us. Please. Taylor, work on that. We have bear head. <laughs> All right, we're off and running on our Baylor Coaches Show with Coach Matt Rule. We're glad you're with us. We'll take a break and be right back. We're live at Rooney's in Waco. Rooney's Real Texas Barbecue. We'll be right back after this.
Feature show, first of the year, and we appreciate everyone that is here, tuned in, watching, listening. Thank you very much for being with us. John Morris with Baylor head football coach Matt Rule, and uh, your family is out here, coach, and that's fun to have your family here with you. Absolutely, it's uh, it's uh, the restaurant's a favorite of ours, and we don't live too far from here, so in between dance classes and, and whatever else we my wife Julie who's a rock star found a way to get the girls here come yeah come on up yeah you'll help uh, you'll help make us look better if you come yeah, up here you go. Well, come on. <laughs> ah, all right so this is this is Vivi the owner's over there being shy and, and Brian's over there watching the UCLA Cincinnati game. yeah Brian's uh, plugged into a game That's isn't right. he yes all right very good well we'll uh we can put a headset on her and talk to her also that's great <laughs> Thanks, and look right there. That's what you look like on TV, okay, with your dad. <laughs> uh, it's great to have your family here. This is great. Uh, Stephen F. Austin coming up on, on Saturday. It's a little different uh, coaching change. New coaching staff there sort of moved in mass from uh, A&M Commerce. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Colby Carthel, he's, uh, you know, he's his dad, legend of West Texas A&M, and uh, uh, Colby, a great coach. What he did at Texas A&M Commerce was amazing. Turned it around in a matter of a couple of years. And, um, you know, when you get into coaching, you know, you, you see the guys you respect. You see the guys on the road who work at a high level. And he gets players that want to go, go wherever he goes because he's got an infectious personality. They have a system they believe in. They work. So he'll be really, really successful. And so, uh, you know, it's an honor for me to take the field with him. Um, I know that uh, East Texas kids are tough. They love the game. A lot of our guys are really excited about the game because they have guys that they know that they played with, they went to high school with on the team. I bet. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to play against a tough team. You know, great opponents bring out the best in you. And so, you know, the scoreboard for us never defines us. The film defines us. How we play defines us. And so, uh, you know, I'm excited to play against a, a group of kids from East Texas. They're going to come out here and, and uh, fight us. And we'll play hard against them. And we'll, you know, shake each other's hands at the end of the game. But it uh, should be a lot of fun. What do you, uh, can you scout them much at all? Do you look at, or is it kind of twofold? You sort of scout Stephen F. Austin from last year and then scout maybe A&M Commerce. It's two years in a row now that we're watching. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're watching 20 games getting ready. For, you know, wow. we're watching Commerce's offense, Commerce's defense. We're watching their schemes, their decisions. But we're also watching Stephen F. Austin's uh, personnel. And we did the same thing last year with Abilene Christian. And at the same time, you also know that they, you know, they can change. So we're trying to teach our players Preparation is not about during the week. It's also about in-game. You get into the game, you recognize, hey, they're attacking us this way. And that's a mature team. That's a veteran team. And so I expect us to do that at a high level. Very you good. You're going to smile. You don't look like you have a big smile. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, you got tooth missing out oh, there, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Yeah, that was a bouncy house issue last week. Oh, week. really? Yeah. Yikes. All right. <laughs> uh, and you know Car Coach Carthel uh, pretty well, right? Yeah, yeah I, got to, I worked a couple camps with him, respected him. We had a coach's opening a couple years ago. I talked to him about coming here, and uh, but you know what? He's a head coach, and um, you know he's doing a great job. I was happy when he got that job, and uh, I know he'll, I know he'll do a, a great job there. You can just tell when you're around a winner. He'll, he'll he'll win at a high level. I just don't want don't want him to win Saturday. And so I'm proud of our team, and I I want our team to play against a team like this, a team that uh, knows how to play the game the right way. Let me ask you about your, uh, your single-digit guys this year. Folks, uh, I'm sure you know by now, he awards single digits, voted on by the coaches and the players to the really the toughest guys, the leaders on your team. There's only nine of them. Uh, that's a great group of single-digit guys this yeah, year. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, it's the first time in, two years, in three years now that we have a full slate of one through nine, and we could have had one through 14. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, we, we, we pride ourselves on being tough. You know, we don't bend and break to the strain of life. We're hardworking. We always try to do extra, and we're competitive. We want to be the best at everything that we do. And so I challenge our team to, you know, to find the top, uh, the single digits, to find the guys who represent that brand and everything that they do, and they found it. And it's pretty cool because there, there's a lot of seniors. There's a couple juniors. Um, but they found guys who have done it for a couple of years, and that, that, you know, they'll, they'll represent the, the, the brand the right way. It's a good sign, isn't it, that you have trouble having only nine single-digit guys. That's a good sign. That's a really good <laughs> sign. <laughs> it makes you feel good. You know, I, 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 I've been a head coach now for seven years, and uh, first time I've ever had a captain. And um, uh, we have guys like Sam Tecklenburg. We have guys like Jordan Williams and those single digits and many more um, who are deserving. And so, 
it, it's never about us. It's always about the team. It's always about the program. Those guys represent the program in a really you know, first-class way. So Sam Tecklenburg will be, and, and Jordan Williams will be season-long captains. And then you'll have two game-by-game uh, -game captains. Yeah, Jamison Houston will, have, will be the captain this week on defense. Great cover corner, tremendous talent, and uh, a guy that's put it all together. And we're excited to see him play. And then uh, R.J. Sneed is a redshirt sophomore who's had the best camp of anyone. Camp, right? Oh, my yeah. goodness. And, um, you know, they, they represent exactly what we're looking for. It's not about, you know, where you were recruited. It's not about what you did last year. It's about what you do day in and day out. And those guys are doing it at a high level. Uh, Tech uh, could have been a single-digit guy, right? Yep, yep. Would have been, yep, yep. but an offensive lineman can't do that, can't wear a single digit. Aw awesome story. And I told the team, hey, you can vote for whoever you want. You can even vote for the old lineman. But obviously they can't wear it, yeah. so don't waste your vote. And they still voted for it. And they him. did it anyway. Uh, it was, it was a, a true sign of wow. this guy means something. And, um, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a guy that made the unselfish decision to go from being a tight end to being a center. Mm -hmm. and not many guys do that. Yeah. And he's fought his way over the last three years to where he, he makes everyone around him better. And, um, you know, he makes me better. So I couldn't think of a better captain of, 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 of anyone I've ever coached. And what about uh, Jordan Williams? What are the qualities that, that led you to select him? Well, he's the epitome of the process. He's a guy that we first came here, and he was a great kid, but he was doing things one way, we were doing them another. And he has just slowly, slowly, slowly found a way to, to, to get on board with us. No one has, no one has you know, acquiesced to the process. No one has you know, subjugated themselves to the team. No one has given more and sacrificed more than him. And now he's a guy that does everything right. He's a guy that only cares about the team. And I thought, you know what, he's the guy I go to when you know, I need something done on special teams. He's the guy I go to when I need someone to talk to a young guy. So between Tecklenburg and him, we have two great captains. And then we have lots of other guys that will do a great job each week. Very cool. All right. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more in a moment. Vivi, you stay up here with us if you want to. All right. Who's going to win Saturday? Baylor? Baylor? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't know? Say Baylor. <laughs> Sick of Bears. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. It's the Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's, Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. And we're back right after this. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Live from Rudy's, it's our Baylor Coaches Show. Glad you're with us. Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue, also brought to you by 
your Texas best Chevy dealers, Jim Turner, Chevrolet, and McGregor, the official Chevy dealer of Baylor Athletics, your Central Texas Chevy truck headquarters. Take advantage of huge savings during our Labor Day sales event. Stop in today or visit online at turnerchevy.com for the best deal on your new Chevrolet. Back with Baylor head football coach uh, Matt Rule, season opener this Saturday, 6 p.m. at uh, McLean Stadium for Baylor and Stephen F. Austin. Uh, fifth meeting all time, Baylor's 4-0 against Stephen F. Austin. You know the scores of those games, what they add up to? Uh, well, yeah, we'll move on. Yeah, all right, yeah. we'll move on from there. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the uh, most recent meeting between Baylor and SFA was 2011. They played over here, and it was uh, it was a torrential storm. We didn't finish the game. Wow. They ended up uh, calling the game in the third quarter, and they say the Stephen F. Austin folks say that it was a lot of thunder and lightning. Some of it in the skies, most of it on the on the field, because <laughs> that was Robert Griffin, who was 20 of 22 in that game. Wow. And Terrence Ganaway had a big uh, big game rushing, and Kendall Wright had a big game. So that was the most recent meeting with Stephen F. Austin. That's great. But they're coming in this Saturday at uh, 6 p.m. Let me ask you about your defense, and then we got some questions uh, from our audience. In fact, this is one of the questions. Uh, Jackie Jones, where is Jackie? Jackie's right there, okay. Uh, this is our First Place Foods Ask the Coach. First Place Foods, Hun's Private Stock Pickles. That's a darn good pickle. And Jackie's question is, explain the 3-3-5 defense. That's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm fascinated. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to answer that question. So, uh, you know, 3-3-5 means there's three down linemen, there's three linebackers, and five safeties, uh, five defensive backs. And we've done it about, you know, we've done it about 30 to 40 percent of the time in the last couple of years. In fact, two years ago against Oklahoma, we did it a lot, you know, against Baker Mayfield, trying to get as much speed on the field. And last year we had a veteran group on the D line. You know, we had Ira Lewis, who's with the Houston Texans. We had Greg Roberts with the Packers, uh, along with the guys we have now. And when those guys left, we looked at our team and said, you know what, our talent is in the secondary. Uh, let's get the best guys on the field. And so uh, we're trying to feature that. We're trying to, you know. Uh, play with play with those, those fast guys on the field, but to do that the, the big guys have to stand up inside There's only three of them. There's not four anymore And uh, we're gonna play three true freshmen on the defensive line this week And so when you do that you always know there's gonna be some bright moments. There's gonna be some oh my goodness What just happened <laughs> moments, but um, they're good kids and they're and they're, they're talented. So we're gonna work. We're gonna work with them. So uh, it, It's one of those defenses that you know, like I said puts pressure on the D line but at the same time gets a lot of speed on the field and as we've looked at ourselves the last couple of years, we've done a lot of good things, but we've also given up a lot of big plays. And so putting one more fast guy in the field, we're hopeful that we give up a couple less big plays. Yeah, good answer. Good question, Jackie. Thanks for that. In that defensive front, uh, James Lynch is one of the guys up there. Man, he is uh, preseason, all Big 12, first team. He seems to be uh, really on pace to have a great season. Yeah, uh, James, James is a great football player, and, and this defense suits him. Um, he's one of those guys, he can, he can, he's big enough to be a D tackle, he's fast enough to be a defensive end, and so this defense allows him to do both. Bravion Roy, James Lockhart, th those are three veterans that have played a lot of football. And then after that we get to the young guys, and uh, uh, <laughs> they're going to be fun to grow up with, though. Young, but really talented. Really, guys I like mean, Gabe Hall. Oh, yeah. You walk in our building now, we, we look like the basketball team. We yeah. have a bunch of 6'5", to 6'8", defensive linemen, you know, Gabe Hall, uh, Garmin Randolph, TJ Franklin. Um, uh, Chidi Ogbenaya, there, there's a bunch of guys who are going to play a lot of football. And don't forget about Braylon Taylor at yeah. six foot eight, 260 pounds, <laughs> former receiver. He went from catching passes to, to taking on double teams. Wow. But, um, but they're talented, and so we'll just have to do a great, do a great job of coaching them. How about those linebackers uh, with Clay in the middle? Clay is a single-digit guy, Clay Johnston. We talked about Jordan Williams, and then Blake Lynch has really grown into, it seems like, that linebacker position. Yeah, you know, Blake Lynch is a great story. Five positions, offense, defense. He's done whatever the team's asked, and um, I thought he made a lot of plays at the end of last year once he had kind of settled on a position, and, and now he's in a great stride, and I think he'll play really well for us this year. And the secondary, you touched on it. I mean, you've got a lot of guys that are, that are very talented, very fast. It seems like you'll be able to rotate in pretty well in the secondary. Yeah, you know, uh, Chris Miller, Henry Black, and Grayland, three single digits, three veterans at, at the safety positions, and then uh, Jameson Houston, Raleigh Texada. Raleigh was, you know, made some uh, postseason All-Big 12 stuff last year. And then Kalen Barnes, I mean, 
you know, he, 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 he did a full scrimmage for us in the spring and then went out and ran 10 2 9 in the track meet <laughs> afterwards. Uh, he's just a special athlete. Wow. All right, uh, let's go to another question. This is from Roy Evans. Roy is right here, front and center. Roy says, with all the speed on defense, we were just talking about that, will we see more blitzes this year? Well, I mean, uh, depends on how well we cover. You know, we, we, we blitzed a lot um, uh, last year uh, at times. And the, the Big 12, one of the reasons why it's such a great conference is, is people utilize the RPO to you blitz, they throw, they get the ball out of their hands. And so um, if we have the ability to cover and play some man and take away the RPOs, then I think uh, we'll feel really good about, you know, being able to blitz. Uh, we, we've been mainly a zone blitz team because we haven't felt really, really whole about playing a lot of man. Uh, the Big 12 tears up man-to-man -man defenses. Um, people talk about Big 12 defenses, but, we, you know, when, when Oklahoma goes and plays Georgia, they put up, you know, 350 yards in the first half. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just a whole other level of football, offensive football, at least in this league. And so um, if we can hold up, I think we'll, we'll, we'd like to be aggressive. I think the biggest thing for our guys is we've tried to teach our players, and I think this is one thing, you know, in football that I've learned a long time. Uh, the right, uh, the wrong defense played by the right players is a lot better than the wrong defense played by the wrong mm -hmm. the, the right defense played by the wrong players. And so... Um, it, whether we blitz, whether we play zone, whether we play man, whether we, you know, play four down, three down, it comes down to players making plays. It comes down to coaches letting, allowing players to make plays. And so uh, we want to be aggressive and turn them loose. So hopefully we'll blitz and cover and our guys will play with a little bit of a swagger on defense, which is, uh, which is uh, something that wasn't here when we first got here. We're trying to build it. It takes time. But I think we're finally about ready to play with a little bit of swagger on defense. And along those lines, you know, the, your, your primary defense will be a 3-3-5, but you can go to a four-man front really I I at any time, right? That'd yeah, be easy to do. It's just subbing one guy. Yeah. I mean, um, we do it every day, you know, so uh, we, we, can, we can be pretty multiple in the things that we do. We have a lot of different packages. Very good. All right, another question. Uh, this is our First Place Foods Ask the Coach. First Place Foods, that's a darn good pickle. Uh, Nani Orozco, where's Nani? He's right there. All right, and the question is, uh, you and your staff have a strong, uh, strong priority of turning out real men, husbands, and fathers. Do NFL coaches and staff not have opportunities to do the same? Well, I think um, NFL coaches uh, absolutely have the opportunity to do the same. I think the people we work with have the opportunity, opportunity to do the same. Um, it just comes down to when you get people and where they are and what stage of their life, you know. We have lots of young people that come into our program, and we try to, number one, make sure that we're modeling that. You can say all the words you want, but if you're not doing it, if they don't see your kids, if they don't see you know, the things that you're doing, you have no chance of ever getting that done. And so we want to model those things. We want to talk about those things. We want to reinforce those things. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, young people have to make a decision. And so uh, I've had a chance coaching the NFL. You're getting guys a little bit older. Yeah. Uh, don't even believe in about the money. You know, they, they have families, too. They have issues, too. But well, I will say this about the NFL. There's a lot more really good people out there than people realize. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more fathers and strong husbands and Christian men and good men and tough guys and just really great people there. We, we spend a lot of time on, you know, social media and the media talking about the three, four guys that draw a lot of attention. But there's a lot of other guys just trying to make it week to week. Mm -hmm. And so uh, some of the guys I coach at the Giants I still talk to. But I think all of us have an opportunity in everything that we do to not only talk about, but also to model the right things for people to see. Yeah, amen to that. That's great. Nani, good question. Thank you very much for that. Before we let you go, uh, let's talk special teams a little bit. We're going to have some new, new guys, new faces out there in some pretty key positions. Yeah, we, um, <laughs> we have uh, a new kicker uh, in, in John Mayers. We have uh, a new uh, kickoff man in Noah Rauschenberg, both of whom, one's a redshirt freshman, one's a freshman, and Isaac Powers, who's a freshman punter. So, you know, there, there's a little bit of nerves right now. <laughs> They're all tremendously talented. And so one of the things I said to Noah is I said, listen, I don't care where the first couple balls go. Just go out there and attack it. No regrets. Play without fear. And in time, you'll hit your stride. And so I feel good about where we're headed. I'm not sure where we're at, but I know where we're headed, and we're headed in a good place. Uh, and kick returns. I mean, you got a lot of uh, Fleeks and some other guys. you got a lot of options as far as kick returns. Yeah, Josh Fleeks has done it at a high level. Uh, John Lovett. Um, to Michael Hasty. I think the biggest thing is there's a real buy-in across our whole team to help on special teams. You know, Mike Sarab was our special teams coordinator, has done a great job. Ed Foley, who's over here, you know, they scored, he was at Temple last year as a special teams coordinator. They scored a touchdown on special teams in eight different ways. Wow. No, wow. One, no one, I don't know if anyone in the history of football has done that. Yeah. And uh, Ed's with us now, so 
Um, I think we realize that, that special teams can make a difference, not just in a game, but in our season. Our players recognize that, and uh, our best players are trying to help. And you guys uh, led the nation last year with seven block kicks. That, that was big. That's a real uh, momentum changer in a game. There's no it? better sound than that thump as, yeah. long as, as long as you're not the one kicking. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so we work really hard at that. And uh, it's something that we, you know, we have an expectation of, hey, we're going to lead the country in block kicks this year. And uh, it's easy to say it's hard to do, but we've done it in a couple years now, so we'll keep trying to do it. All right. Final uh, thought for you, the, uh, the Baylor United theme, you know, it says many, many layers. Part of it's going to be the new colors, the new uniforms, which we'll see on display on Saturday. What's, uh, what, what do you uh, like most about that, and what's the reaction of the guys been? Well, uh, the players love the uniforms, you know, and so I, people ask me about the uniforms. As a matter of fact, someone stopped me today and asked me what we're wearing. Yeah. I told them I don't even know what I'm wearing to work tomorrow. <laughs> like, I, maybe green, I think this, you know, I, I'm a Penn State guy. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't have anything but a stripe on our helmet. We didn't even have our names on there. But what I do, what, what d does matter to me is, is, is what it stands for. And um, even within our, within our own community, you know, coming out and uh, the community coming out to support us, us going out to support the community, us being a part of the community. I think those are the things that matter. Us supporting other sports, other sports supporting us. Um, I'm proud of the players we have on our football team that played on the track team. I'm proud of walking down into the locker room and seeing the baseball team. I'm proud of seeing the work at 5 o'clock in the morning that I see other sports do. And so to me, Baylor is a place of excellence. It's a place of academic excellence. It's obviously a place, you know, 17 of 19 teams in the NCAA postseason play, a place of athletic excellence, but most importantly, it's a place of personal and spiritual excellence and so um, I think it's great that we're all kind of standing together and standing united standing for Waco what a great place to live yeah. uh, you know what a great community to raise my children in for Julie to raise our children in um, so I think anything that can do to bring the community the university the athletic teams the school the team to bring everyone together and find the things that unite us I think is uh is a powerful thing. Yeah, that's great. Well, Coach, thanks. Can't wait till Saturday night. Looking forward to it. Thanks for being here this evening. I'm uh, very grateful to be here. All Thank right, you. go spend some time with your family. That's thanks right. very much. <laughs> Coach Matt Rule with us this evening. Baylor football season opener is Saturday evening, 6 p.m. at McLean Stadium against Stephen F. Austin. Stay with us. We'll take a break. We'll switch gears. John Capron will join us. Uh, Baylor Cross Country, they have a home meet coming up on Friday. We'll talk about all that when we come back. Stay with us. The Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's. Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. Thank you. Show 
show for this year. Glad you're with us tonight. Each week we will give you a uh, sports, uh, Baylor, Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics uh, health tip. When it comes to orthopedics, Baylor, Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics brings the home team advantage to Central Texans and is bringing you tonight's sports tip. Recovery is the key to give you the strength and energy needed to continue to play at a high level. Keep up with proper nutrition, hydration, and make sure you're getting enough rest to allow your body time to recover. This message brought to you by Baylor Scott & White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics. From injury prevention to enhanced recovery, team up with us. All right, uh, we'll take another break here, and when we come back, we'll be joined by Baylor Cross Country Coach John Capron, Associate Head Coach for Baylor Track and Field. Cross Country with a home meet coming up on Friday evening. We'll talk about that and more. Stay with us. The Baylor Coaches Show, live from Rudy's, continues right after this. Come on up. Live from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco, our Baylor Coaches Show continues. Appreciate Coach Matt Rule being here this evening. Now, folks, join me in welcoming Baylor's cross-country coach, Coach John Capron. Welcome to you. Appreciate it. Appreciate you being here. Isn't it nice of these people that came to hear you yeah. tonight? They they came early, you know, so to many get a good seat. Yes, for Coach Rule, so that's yeah. great. Now, oh, man, uh, you've got uh, you've got a home meet coming up on Friday night. Yeah, a lot going on this weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There really is. Tell us about the Bear Twilight Invitational. Yeah, it gets started at 7 p.m., and then the guys will follow immediately, okay. um, immediately after the ladies. The girls will go four kilometers, and the guys will go six. And that's basically uh, 6,000? Yes, yeah, 6,000 right? meters is just uh, right around four miles Close. Yeah. Um, on the guys, and then the girls, it's just a little over two. Gotcha. What teams are coming in for this? So I've got the Texas men and women, SMU women, uh, UT Arlington men and women, and TCU, both sides. Good. Yeah. Uh, are you, uh, what, what's the buildup been like? Uh, Y'all run all the time. You yeah. Know? <laughs> um, it's kind of just trying to figure out what's happening after their summers. Um, first and foremost, um, that's a big training block that goes in yeah. that they're doing almost completely by themselves, which is really a testament to their determination and perseverance over the summer because they're doing that concurrently with uh, summer internships or classes that they're taking, which is really impressive. Um, so we're kind of just seeing where they got to kind of on their own. We didn't report till August 13th. Oh, wow. Um, so it's pretty quick to try to turn around a, a race uh, that quickly. So we're kind of seeing what 
this race is more a measure of what they've gotten done on their own almost. Um, and it's a little shorter than anything else we'll race all year. So gotcha. it's more of just a litmus test actually to see where we're at currently. And really your only home meet of the year, you do host the Big 12s this year in November, but this is really the only chance for folks here to, uh, to go out and see your teams. Yeah, until November, yeah. Um, it's really nice. Um, it meets over quick, so you won't be out there too long. Yeah. But I think it's going to be a little cooler this year. Um, so we're excited about it only being in the 90s this time. Yeah. <laughs> so no, in past years, I mean, you've had been a cooker. Yeah, yeah so like scary hot. Yeah, a little, they, they cancel meets up north when it's this hot. And yeah. we're down yeah. here going, wait a minute, we ran. What's wrong with you guys? It's a normal day. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 100. We're in the field. So, um, the kids are tough, and uh, they had to do it well, and um, they get ready. And your group is really self-motivated. They have yeah. to be, don't they? Like you said, what they do over the summer is all on their own. Yeah. Uh, they have to take care of that, and they have to push themselves. Yeah, really proud of the freshmen this summer. I mean, I send calendars out uh, beginning June 1, and a lot of that is for them to, you know, talk back and forth to me, but interpret a little bit on their own and sort of know what they're getting into and the freshmen this year did a really good job preparing and I'm really proud of them and because of that I've got a few more than than normal that are just going to be immediately pressed into service um you know I've got guys that are running upwards of 70 miles a week over the summer just wow. to prepare for this meet so it's pretty impressive wow tell us uh the makeup of your team this year veterans uh, you talked about the freshmen are really impressive yeah the the guys coming in uh I've only got two uh, okay. freshmen but I've got some freshmen that didn't get to go uh, last year that are going to rotate back a year. And so actually I have six guys that are technically freshmen this oh, wow. year. So okay. I've got a really strong com core group kind of that are on the front end that's I think going to grow up really well together on the guy side that I'm excited about and, and good leadership up front for those that men's team. And on the ladies side, it's kind of it's kind of pulled. I've got a bunch of seniors and a bunch of and a bunch of freshmen. <laughs> okay. And there's a couple in the middle that are very important. But right. uh, Definitely a little bit polarity there on the, on the ends. And the women are ranked sixth in, in the region right now? Women are sixth in the region, and uh, I think we can climb up from there a little bit. Uh, nice. It's only going to be a little while, but um, we may not see everyone this first meet. I've got some that are coming out of injuries right now that uh, we need to give them a little bit more time, but uh, excited to give them that time. And again, November is, is a ways away still, so they've got time to kind of round into fitness. And is that sort of your your uh, your your plan? You start now, but you really want to be peaking, running your best in November, and then into the NCAA. Exactly, John. It's it's one of those things that no one's going to remember who wins the Baylor Twilight <laughs> Invitational. We hope it's us, but uh, <laughs> but the the big meets are, are November second, and then uh, two weeks later with the regional meet, yeah. which is how you qualify for nationals, and and that's where they may, that's ranking comes from. So. You know, we're fifth or sixth now, but we need to be second or, you know, top five or, or really top three should be where we kind of land. What's the, uh, you run at the Heart of Texas Complex, Heart of Texas Soccer Heart Complex. Texas Complex. So it's a great uh, group. We got uh, Army Corps of Engineers lets us <laughs> be out there. The HOT lets us be out there. We got to talk to the city. There's a lot of people that have to, to be in the know. And yeah. they're all gracious enough to let us just sort of run around the perimeter of the, of the soccer fields. And hopefully we don't mess anything up. And is that, it's, uh, it's pretty flat, isn't it? It is, is that pretty course flat. out there? There's a wood section that we run through, which is maybe the, uh, the spider research facility. The oh, last couple really? Of times yeah. there. They've been just amazing. Lots of spider webs. It's great. really great. I was raking <laughs> some of the, there was so much grass out there that we were kind of raking some of it away so nobody rolls their ankle. And, yeah. and my assistant coach and I were out there and uh, lots of spiders. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully though, we'll, we got all the places to hide out so they'll be gone tomorrow. So that's <laughs> out at the Heart of Texas Soccer Complex. Yep. But when you host the Big 12s, That'll be at Cottonwood Creek. Yeah, we, we love going out to Cottonwood. We train there a lot. Um, they're awesome about letting us just literally run all over the place. So if you see uh, footprints in the grass when you're <laughs> golfing in the morning and it looks like 500 people ran through, we just ran through a whole bunch of times. That's us. <laughs> Everything's fine. Um, but they let us run right down the fairways, and the grass is great out there. Uh, the crew does a great job of keeping up with us and making sure everything's nice. But uh, it's a great course. Yeah. Um, it's deceptively difficult. Huh. Um, it looks flat from the parking lot, but it is. No, if anybody's <laughs> yeah. been out there or lost the ball in one of those lakes, they, they know it, it's got some uh, texture to it. It's oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It gets hard quick when you run from the top to the bottom a yeah. couple times. There's a little undulation out there Definitely. that course. Definitely. All right, stay with us through a break. Uh, we'll continue with more in a moment. We'll visit with Coach John Capron, Baylor cross-country coach, 
We're live at Rudy's. It's the Baylor Coaches Show, and we'll continue in just a moment. Here from Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. And we'll be right back after this. And you're back with us on our Baylor Coaches Show, live from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. Appreciate everyone that is tuned in this evening. Thanks to everyone that is here in person. Let you know we'll be here uh, next week, next Thursday. We'll have another Coaches Show next Thursday. And Phil Snow will be with us, Baylor football defensive coordinator. And maybe you've heard of her, Kim Mulkey will be here next week. So uh, that'll be a lot of fun. That is next Thursday, the 5th of September, for our next Baylor Coaches Show here live from Rudy's. With us now is John Capron, Baylor Cross Country. And uh, what is the uh, what is the training regimen like? You, you said you sent him a, a workout schedule. Uh, 70 miles a week, is that kind of kind of the norm? Uh, for the guys, yeah. For the guys? The girls, uh, my middle, middle year girls, the sophomores and juniors are usually around 60. Uh, some of them, upper class girls, maybe into the 70s like the boys. Um, there's guys on my team that would probably in time, they'll probably work up to 80 or even 90. Wow, man. Yeah. And uh, most of that, I mean, most of your practices that I know of are early mornings. Yeah, so around here, you, you don't want to yeah, run in the afternoon. Start as early as you can, no, right? Not if you're putting in at 11. <laughs> it's not very much fun if you yeah. do it in the afternoon. So most of the time we're getting up, uh, we start work out at 6.30. Um, and we usually do a nice little warm up, a few drills, get going, and kind of hit the road. Um, Usually our typical workout week is uh, Monday, Thursday. We okay. try to go Monday, Thursday with our hard efforts. And a hard effort might be repeat 2Ks or something okay. at Cottonwood. Okay. Um, or we'll do a tempo run sometimes. Um, you'll see it's running around. Uh, there's Oakwood Cemetery down here. Yeah. There's no cars in the morning. Yeah. It's real quiet. <laughs> so we'll do... Uh, it's very we'll do quiet. Very quiet. <laughs> it's lovely. Um, uh, we'll do some tempo runs through there. It's a lovely two-mile loop. Mm. It's oh, trees and it's, it's shady sometimes. So... Uh, we do that uh, pretty regularly because you can run really fast uh, on the roads out there. And we'll do that uh, somewhere between four to up to eight miles on the guy's side of just sustained effort. And that's kind of the purpose of the tempo. And it, the intervals, you kind of move down the speed a little bit, but try to get the same amount of volume kind of thing with breaks in between. And it's all lead-up activities to try to get the same 
the race that you want, basically, you. kind of put the, when you put it all together, yeah. it becomes the race that you wanted. Essentially. I got you. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And there's uh, obviously more that you do in training. Uh, some weights. Yep. We do work all uh, the uh, road work. Coach Skidinski helps us out in the weight room on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we're actually working on trying to implement something a little bit. Two or two days a week is great, but if you can slide in maybe one other really? one other day that we can kind of work on a little bit of something, we've been working on trying to where to implement that. It's hard to do on a on a Saturday uh, because that's a long run day, and on long run day they're running anywhere from 12 to 14 to maybe even 16. Wow. And asking them to do weights after that is, yeah. is a tough sell, <laughs> uh, if I'm honest. So, uh, so we're trying to figure out when to slide that into the week. Uh, it may be Friday. Friday might be yoga day, though. The staying flexible for these guys is huge, and just making sure they're put together right is a, is a big task. So um, the better they're put together, the more, the more they can handle from my end. And so it takes kind of a team. Our trainers do an awesome job. Uh, Coach Skidinski, the strength and performance, does a great job of just putting them together so that they can handle more mileage or volume from, from, from me, really. Wow. It's a great plan. It really yeah. is. You, uh, you, you have such a long season in track and field, yes. I and mean, you're going now, Starting and right. you've got the outdoor. I mean, you've got cross country going on yep. now. Then uh, after the first of the year, the indoor right. track season, right. and then the outdoor right. season, and then into the summer, into June. Right. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's 11, 10, 11 months, isn't it? Yeah, they, the they don't have very many uh, just off times where they're right. just completely off. And so you kind of circle some dates on the calendar and say, hey, we're going to be ready for this one and this one. Yeah. Those are the big ones. And everything else is kind of, is kind of part of the build process, really. But you kind of have to pick your seasons a little bit. Um, but we've done a really good job, Coach Arbor, uh, throughout the years. And then kind of what I've learned from him is just if you do it right and you're building constantly and you're not really just go, go, go all the time, you can, you can sustain for those three seasons. Now, the freshmen, it's, it's really hard to make that jump from high school to college that first fall yeah. as a cross-country athlete oh, and then go imagine. straight into indoor yeah. that maybe you've never done before, <laughs> followed up by another outdoor season at a level that you've never touched yeah. is really hard. And so most of the time for my freshman, I'm hoping for, you know, maybe a really good cross season. We'll retool maybe during the indoor, yeah. see what we can get maybe, and then really go after it outdoor because there's you. a little more opportunity. That's a good plan. Do you ever have a period of time when you say, just shut it down, don't run at all? Uh, yeah, they get a – a little bit of a, a week maybe around um, Christmas is that the time uh, it's usually right after cross is over so right okay. after Thanksgiving oh, if they're okay. all the way to the national meet yeah it'll be right after Thanksgiving where I give them about a week where they they're allowed to go pretty easy and I don't bother them and then after that week oh, my kids they're so driven they get really antsy they get about a week where after a week they're like coach can I run <laughs> and I'm like you can run but I'm not gonna tell you what to do right. for a whole other week so maybe like one week they get maybe don't run and then another week like you can run if you want but i'm not gonna yeah. boss you around yet yeah and then after that it's we're at it again go time again yeah. hey we got a question from the audience yet for this all right this is from uh roy evans roy is right there this is our first place foods ask the coach first place foods huns private stock pickles that's a darn good pickle uh roy says what would be a typical meal prior to a cross-country meet that's a question great, that's a great question yeah um our kids are so individual, so it really is going to vary. Um, but Juliana, our, our nutritionist, does a great job of kind of uh, educating us on this. Um, and so really it shouldn't change that much from your daily. Um, but it is going to swing a little bit more carbohydrate heavy um, just because that's the energy you need to kind of bop off the line and keep it going. But you should kind of already be doing that. And so mostly our kids are going to – the whole – carbo load thing you've maybe heard about is is kind of a is that a it's not really a thing oh really okay yeah okay. Uh, unless you're running like marathon level you might get into that okay uh, but most of our kids they're running you know this meets a 4k and a 6k you're not going to get into that kind of uh, meeting of this huge meal I they kind of run from so right. most of the time it's all about you know the timing of it and something you're comfortable with you don't want to be making any weird experiments uh with your meals pre-race that can result in some some trouble race time um, but a lot of times it's going to be something simple, a simple salad. Uh, you definitely want some protein in there for the lasting energy, but you're going to want some, some carbs in there as well. So uh, you can get that from, you know, a good old slice of bread, obviously, but you want maybe something that will sustain you a little bit, like a good old potato or uh, maybe uh, some vegetables or fruit. What's the best uh, for protein? 
Like right before a race. Right before the race? You Maybe not be, right before, you want to be careful before. With that. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a great question. Um, I don't know if there was one thing. You, I mean, you ran. Yeah. What did you, what did you think go to? I had to be really careful. Really? I was pretty... I had to time way out, way out, or I had all, all kinds of just stomach issues. Uh, there were guys that could be in the could be in the stands eating a hot dog pre-race, oh and I could race them, and they'd be fine. And I was I was not that person. I had to be pretty careful. But um, you know, a good a good peanut butter or something like that lasts pretty good. That's it has, what I was thinking. Some good peanut staying butter. power. Yeah, if you yeah. if you time it out far enough, that's a good one usually. Okay. Um, but any of the you know. Nut butter, nut butter, almond, almond butter, those kind of things are, yeah. are pretty clean, too. I, that's what I was thinking was peanut butter. Yeah, I didn't one. want to say that. On, like, a bagel or something like that, that's right. kind of best of both worlds a lot of times, and that's pretty popular, like, pretty early. Like, if it's a morning race, they'll eat that, you know, at, like, 8 o'clock, and they'll race at 11. That's, that's kind of a good one. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you ran here. You went to school at Baylor. You've yeah. coached here for a long time. Yep. I asked Coach Rule about the, the Baylor United and yeah. the, uh, you know, everybody's, you know, simpatico now, the yeah. colors. We finally agreed on what our green and what our gold is. Definitely. What you, you're showing that with this shirt. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about where we have progressed to with this Baylor United? It's nice to be pretty streamlined. Uh, yeah. that's, that's a great thing to kind of, you know, something as simple as I'm walking around and, Everybody's got the same backpack on. It's an athlete at Baylor. Well, that's cool, you know. You're like, cool. hey, that's a football guy. Hey, that's a track guy. Yeah. You know, and just something as simple as that. I mean, just it does kind of, you know, no one has, somebody doesn't have, oh, they got this cool backpack, and we only got, you know, yeah. everyone's got the same one, and that's kind of cool. We're kind of, you've earned that backpack, and you're part of the, kind of part of the club there, and that's, like that's that. nice. Um, we've always had a great relationship with Nike, and they've done a great job with us, but it's kind of nice to have everybody, you know, in line with one another yeah definitely nice i agree and uh so you're you run on friday night uh do, do your uh, t team members like uh, going to the football games like uh, supporting the other sports oh definitely um we've been to a soccer game as a team this year um definitely we'll be at the the football game we've got recruits in this weekend so yeah. we'll have a whole posse there so it should be really good um but definitely love supporting you know the other athletes and uh, we had a whole crew at the track this morning, we're greeting us this morning, so we had Acro was there and softball was there, really? so it was, like, it was like a little party at 6.30 <laughs> in the morning, it was great. At 6.30 a.m., yeah, that's great. Track. All Lights right, on. All right, let's remind everybody again, the Bear Twilight Invitational yep. is Friday night, starts Friday at night. 7 o'clock, women run first, followed by the men. Correct. It's at the Heart of Texas Soccer Complex in Waco, you know where that is, out Airport Road toward the Waco Airport. And uh, it doesn't last long. I mean, somebody no. could come out there and, and, you know, see it all in an hour probably. Oh, less than that, actually. Less than yeah, an the hour. girls should take 14 minutes, the guys maybe 18, and uh, free admission, come on out. All right, Cap, good luck. Thanks. Appreciate Thanks it. for being here. Yep. John Capron, Baylor Cross Country coach with us. Appreciate him very much. Good luck to Baylor running in the Bear Twilight Invitational on Friday. Let's take a break. When we come back, we'll look at the upcoming schedule of Baylor events. Wrap things up from here at Rudy's. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue.
Ladies, we'll wrap things up here on our inaugural Baylor Coaches Show for 2019-2020. Uh, Appreciate Coach Matt Rule being with us. Thanks to Coach John Capron being with us. Big weekend ahead, Baylor Cross Country and football Saturday. Good night from Rudy's. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, my bad.